Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome you to worship as we gather this Sunday in, Pente in the season after Pentecost. Well, we're in the midst of summer, right? And yet, it was a nice, cool morning. We have worshiped today at 8.30, and we, we had uh, it right around 70 degrees. So it was a ni nice day, and I hope you all had a nice 4th of July. And I want to say welcome to any of our guests. We have some guests today, so glad to have you here. And also want to say um, that we're welcoming you who are worshiping with us through YouTube or through fa uh, Facebook Live. We invite you to fill out a, a Connect card and um, share what's happening with you as we want to stay connected with you, either online or in person. Today we shall celebrate Holy Communion, so we'll be sharing that during the service. Um, there are several announcements. There are some places that we need some help. You'll see that in the bulletin. In a, a little less than two weeks, we'll gather on Saturday the 20th to celebrate our our life with scouting, with Cub Scout Pack 98 and Troop 98 um, on Saturday. You'll see more in the bulletin about that. But we're very thankful for that ministry, and uh, we are closing that chapter and celebrating what God has done through scouting here at Montford Heights United Methodist Church. There's more about Camp Some More in August and needing some help with volunteers for that Friday night uh, celebration, big carnival, so big plans for that. We are hiring, we, we, the job description is out, and we're have, starting to have some interest for positions for organist and music director, or a combined position. We're looking at all those options. And we're, there are some other announcements in the bulletin, we ask you just to refer to those. This, this past three weeks, we've been focusing on open your heart. And we've been reading 2 Corinthians and Paul's letter to the church in Corinth and thinking about uh, how we're called to open our heart to God and to each other. Today's focus is on in strength and in weakness, so we'll be talking about that. But before saying anything else, I want to just uh, recognize one person. Marilyn Baker is moving to, to be with her daughter up in Buffalo, and this is her last Sunday. I'm sure you'll you'll come back and visit us sometime, yeah. But, you know, a lot of, a lot of new folks will receive a mug, but we're gonna send you with a mug as you go so you can remember Montford Heights. There's a little Christmas ornament in there. And uh, we're also putting together, asking everyone to take a moment to sign the cards out, out there for Marilyn, write her a little note, and uh, we'll share those with, with her. She, um, we have a, a cake, a little reception after this service, so we invite you all to to take some time to, to give thanks for Marilyn and 40 years here as a part of Montford Heights United Methodist Church. And we, we pray that God's blessings go with you and your family and just figuring out the, this next part of your life. And we're so thankful for your ministry you've shared with us. You're welcome. And I'm just going to say a quick prayer with you, if I might. Gracious God, we pray your blessings now on Marilyn. We give thanks for her ministry here, her life, and we continue, we know that you will continue to go with her and to lead her and that you'll continue to work through her, through her wonderful spirit of openness and kindness and friendship that she has and that you'll continue to minister through her with, with family, with new friends, and with us as she continues her relationships here as well. We give you thanks again for Marilyn and pray your blessings on her. In Jesus' name, amen. You're welcome. Now let us worship God as we take a moment to, to focus and center and to consider our weakness and God's strength and God's strength in our strength as well.
Spirit of God, descend upon our hearts as we open our hearts to you. I invite you to stand for the call to worship as you are able. Beloved, when our bodies feel unable and incapable, and the voices all around us disparage and criticize our bodies as weak and worthless, God calls to us, open your heart to your weakness and my strength. When we persist in the false belief that we should and must do everything on our own, never asking for help and persisting in our drive for full independence, God calls to us, open your heart to your weakness and my strength. When we feel shame because we need help and the deep vulnerability of our needs pierces our hearts, God calls to us, open your heart to your weakness and my strength. Listen, pay attention. God calls to us in our weakness, not to erase our frailties or bemoan all the things society may tell us we lack, but to empower us within the vulnerability of our humanness naming us beloved in the fullness of who we are. May we open our hearts in worship to receive the goodness in our weakness and the power in the strength of God's love for all of God's vulnerable creation. Amen. Let us continue to worship as we sing the morning song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, on number 400 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please be seated. Our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2 through 10, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. This is Paul referring to himself in this passage and talking about his weakness and God's strength. I know a man in Christ who was called up into the third heaven 14 years ago. I don't know whether it was in the body or out of the body. God knows. I know that this man was called up into paradise and that he heard 
unspeakable words that were things no one is allowed to repeat. I don't know whether it was in the body or apart from the body. God knows. I'll brag about this man, but I won't brag about myself except to brag about my weaknesses. If I did want to brag, I wouldn't make a fool of myself because I'd tell the truth. I'm holding back from bragging so that no one will give me any more credit than what anyone sees or hears about me. I was given a thorn in my body because of the outstanding revelations I've received so that I wouldn't be conceited. It's a messenger from Satan sent to torment me so that I wouldn't be conceited. I pleaded with the Lord three times for it to leave me alone. He said to me, my grace is enough for you because power is made perfect in weakness. So I'll gladly spend my time bragging about my weaknesses so that Christ's power can rest on me. Therefore, I'm all right with weaknesses, insults, disasters, harassments, and stressful situations for the sake of Christ. Because when I'm weak, I'm strong. Here ends the reading from the epistle to the second Corinthians. Thanks be to God. Now invite our children to come forward with Miss Kelly. Yeah, did that hurt? No. Just a little bit? Yeah. So we work really hard to keep our bodies healthy, right? What are some things we do to stay healthy? Eat healthy foods. Eat healthy foods. Like carrots. Like carrots. And broccoli. And broccoli. And fruits, and vegetables. fruits and vegetables. Anything else that we do to stay healthy? Pineapple. Pineapple. Oranges. Anything else besides food? We can exercise. Very good. By playing outside. You, she is nailing it, right? Yeah. Did you hear her? Because the sun keeps your vitamins. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very good. You pretty much checked everything off my list, right? You, like, talked about the healthy food, the exercise, that we need to be outside, right? So um, we, we do checkups, right? We go to the dentist to make sure our teeth are okay, and we go to the... Yeah, let me see. Oh, yes, there's an open spot there. I see that. Um, but you know what I've found out? We do. We go to the doctor. We go to the doctor to make sure that we are on track, or that we're healthy, right? And we're, and we're growing, yes. But you know what I found out? Because I'm just a couple years older than you. Not a lot, just a couple. I found out that even when I do all of those things, sometimes I still get hurt. I still get sick. It's because sometimes I don't eat healthy food. She nailed that one, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Occasionally, things slide in there like pizza and ice cream and chocolate. But you're, you cannot eat too much. That is, that is definitely true. But sometimes, like, I'm, I do all the right things, and I still fall down, and I get a boo-boo. Do you know what I need when I get a boo-boo? miracle worker right here. Jesus and then the band-aid. Because this thing solves a lot. A band-aid. You're wearing one. Oh, that's so adorable. It has little bugs all over it. Oh, there's one there too. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, we we really love band-aids. You don't know how many band-aids this church goes through with all of our children's programs. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> Fun band-aids. I know. Um, but guess what? Sometimes other things get broken. No, no, not on our bodies, but inside our bodies. So sometimes our our hearts get sick or they get broken. Have you, have you ever had a sad heart? Oh, that's impressive. Oh, yeah. So sometimes our hearts get broken, right? Yeah, sometimes we don't love each other or sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we don't love each other and sometimes we're sad, right? Other things make us sad, like, like when we fight with our mom or dad. You don't want to fight with your dad. What about what about well, when a friend moves away? That can break our hearts too, right? Yeah, like when mommy was at my birthday party, I didn't want to leave. You didn't want her to leave. Yeah, yeah. Guess what though? Can we can we put a band aid on that? No, we can't, right? That's a very hard thing to put a Band-Aid on when, when, we, when, our, when our brains get stuck on something and we're unsure, when our hearts hurt because we're sad. You know what? That happened to a man named Paul. He was in our Bible, and he was in a real tough spot. That's what, that's what here. What, Paul, yeah. And he was in a tough spot, and he kept asking God. He said, God, please, please get me out of this struggle. Make my heart better. And you know what God said? Yes. God said no. He didn't exactly say no. He just said, I'm not going to take you out of that. But I'm going to be with you. And when you are weak and sad, I am strong. And I am with you. Yeah, God. And that's, yeah, God's kind of like our heart band-aid, right? Yeah. I have something for you to remind you of that. This is pretty cool. You're going to be really glad you're here. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Jesus it's a Jesus Band-Aid. Yeah, it's a Band-Aid. It's our heart, right? And whose name is on it? Jesus, Jesus yeah. Because sometimes we're going to be hurt, and a Band-Aid, a real Band-Aid, isn't going to fix it. But this will remind us that we can talk to Jesus, and he'll help heal our heart, right? And he'll be with us. Yeah, and I would be remiss if because of what we're talking about today, we didn't sing one of my favorite songs. Does anybody know what it is? Does anybody know? Are you ready? Because I'm not singing alone. That will not be pretty. All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And the whole family said, Amen. Thank you, Miss Kelly, and thank you, Willow. Our gospel lesson is from Mark, the sixth chapter, and I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. So we heard a little bit about Paul's weakness, and we hear about a moment in Jesus' life when he went through some weakness returning home. 
Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were surprised. Where did this man get all this? What's this wisdom he's been given? What about the powerful acts accomplished through him? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't he Mary's son and the brother of James and Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? They were repulsed by him and fell into sin. Jesus said to them, Prophets are honored everywhere except in their own hometowns, among their relatives, and in their own households. He was unable to do any miracles there, except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was appalled by their disbelief. Then Jesus traveled through the surrounding villages, teaching. He called for the twelve and sent them to t- sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no bread, no bags, and no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave that place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listen to you as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should change their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons, and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Before jumping into the the sermon, I just want to say a thank you to you as a congregation. Even though I'm only here six, six six months, I've taken almost two weeks to take a little vacation, so I, I give thanks for that. Uh, come back feeling refreshed and thankful for some time away. I know we've you know, Miss Kelly has traveled, uh, Jeff Snyder has traveled, uh, and uh, Pastor Jason's away this week. Uh, so we we're, we're taking some time this summer to to replenish, to be renewed, and uh, it's it's good to be back. I'm I'm very thankful as I reflected over the l- last couple of weeks. Just very thankful to be here, uh, feeling a little more settled in. It was nice to return home to to Cincinnati, to Monfort Heights, to the Parsonage, and uh, now to be back in worship with you. It's a blessing. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we give you thanks for your word and for your heart that speaks to our hearts, and we open them to you and pray that that we may know your strength in our weaknesses. Amen. Well, the past two weeks, I spent a few days at the beach with chosen family and grandchildren. That was wonderful. And then uh, after four days there, headed out for Baton Rouge and uh, driving a U-Haul from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, for four straight days through Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, and then Eastern Washington State. Wonderful trip. Uh, I definitely saw the the mountains, the purple mountains and the amber waves of grain. Uh, I've never seen that part of Washington State. And I I came from the wheat fields of Northwest Ohio, much smaller. You know, here they were just these rolling hills that uh, just very rounded and very soft, but they were just covered with wheat. And you'd look out and you'd see 
just wheat fields going on and on what seemed like forever, surrounded by the mountains beyond that. And uh, the wheat went right up to the road. There were, you didn't even see any ditches. It was just like all you could see was wheat. So very, very thankful for that, that time. While we were away, we got a call from Savannah, who she's a grad student at UC, and she was holding the fort down here in Cincinnati. And our, one of our dogs, Henry, he's a great peer mix, weighs about 85 pounds. He was not walking on his left rear foot and couldn't figure out. He's got some hip issues like big dogs will have, but wasn't putting any weight on it and finally figured out with the vet's help that he had a puncture wound. And it had swollen up. His foot was probably twice the size because it was all infected and swollen up. Well, Savannah helped take care of him, and he's a lot better now. But today we're talking about weakness and finding strength in God. Now, Eden, Savannah found some strength through the vet and the medicine and all those things. But we're talking today about when we experience weakness, the way Paul experienced weakness. We're called to lean towards God, not away from God lean towards God. Paul, the apostle, experienced this, uh, had this wonderful experience of Christ. Writes, you know, we know about it through Acts where he is blinded. He has an experience of the living Lord, and that changes his life. And now he's writing about that 14 years later. And he talks about that experience as being lifted up into heaven, having this incredible experience that he couldn't really even share in words. I don't know, maybe you've had an experience like that where you can't put it into words, what you've been through. But he says, I can't really brag about that. I need you to know more about the weaknesses and the strength that comes from God. He talks about it as the thorn in the flesh. Now, we don't really know what it is, and several people have conjectured over the years whether it was a, a bodily health or a mental health or some kind of behavioral health, something he'd done. We don't really know. It says that he prayed, as Miss Kelly was telling us, he prayed three times for it to be removed, and it was not removed. But through that, he said that through that weakness and God's strength, God's strength was made known. And so he was writing the church at Corinth, and they were having a, a little bit of trouble with each other, Paul and, and the church in Corinth, and he was calling them to stay a part of the church universal, to not just be stuck off by themselves, but to, to continue to be related to the, to the rest of the church to continue to support the church in Jerusalem, to be connected, to be a part. And he was sharing that, you know, all these things he'd experienced and any weaknesses that they'd seen in him in the church in Corinth, that that only pointed towards God's strength. The second reading ties in with the first. As we look at Jesus returning home, now, I don't know if you've had those trips home where you, you feel like it's so, so familiar that people don't really see you for who you are now. You, you've changed. You've grown. You've gone back, and they don't know who you are. They don't understand who you are. And now you're, you're, you're back and feeling underappreciated in an unfamiliar place, even though it's very familiar. Jesus went home and began to teach as he'd been che teaching with others, and, and there was more of a rabble rousing. You know, the people were asking questions. Who is this to come back and teach us? We knew Jesus when. We, knew his, we know his brothers. We know his sisters. What, what's he to us? And it says that he had difficulty, you know, performing miracles, that he had a tough time. 
And yet in that weakness he endured, he went and sent the others out and went and to other villages and taught and healed and, and sent the disciples out two by two to share the good news, to ask people to change their hearts and lives. And we know that that took hold, that there was strength there. And he sent them out in weakness, the disciples he sent out in weakness. He sent them out not with suitcases, bags of clothes or food, not with money, not with even extra change of clothes, but sent them dependent on people's generosity for housing, for shelter, for clean clothes, for food, all those things. He sent them out in weakness to realize God's strength with them. You know, as someone just moving my daughter and driving a U-Haul with a two-bedroom two apartment, as someone who just moved multiple times, closing a house and all those things from Tiffin, Ohio, with so much stuff, <laughs> sometimes I wonder, you know, maybe, maybe they were really right. And I, you know, early in Methodism, clergy would ride their horses from place to place, maybe around here, and uh, depend on people to put them up and to host them. Maybe there's something there in that weakness to find strength in God's community, the beloved community. We live in a world that celebrates strength and perfection. Never let them see you sweat, right? And I have that go through my head sometimes, and I try to do that sometimes. Don't let them see you're tired. Don't, don't let people see that you're emotionally upset. You know, keep it all flat, hidden. Paul said that in his weakness, God's strength prevails. That in his weakness, he has to call on God. And that is the strength that allows him to go forward, to go on, to move on through harassment, through insults, through natural disasters, through whatever. That he in those weaknesses is dependent on God's strength. I want you to think about Christ and his weakness. You know, we we focus so much on the strength of Christ, the miracles of Christ, but he had his moments of, of weakness there in his hometown, and we often reference the cross and the brokenness there, the weakness, the death that he endured, and what the world sees as weakness. You know, to be a a strong leader, don't let them see you sweat, be strong, mentally aware, morally straight, all these things that to be perfect in the world's eyes. And the way of Jesus was to serve and to go and be with those who were seen as weak and outsiders, to be excluded. And that's where he lived. And that's where he taught. And that's where he brought God's love and grace to those who needed to hear it most in their weakness to bring the strength of God. I'd like you to think about your weaknesses. You know, we can try to hide them. We can try to tell ourselves they don't exist. And that leads to pulling away from others, from ourselves, from God, and, and uh, closing ourselves off. You know, kind of like Henry's wound that, that just grew and grew. It was closed off and couldn't heal. In our weakness, we, we need to be able to share that with each other, with God, and depend on each other and find each other and look out for each other. We are not people who believe in, in living lives that are individual and separate from everyone else, where we depend on our strength, our money, our resources. 
we're called to be in a community where we share those because God is the giver. God's strength. God's strength is what brings us together. Today we celebrate Holy Communion and we come together around the weakness of a broken body and, and blood that spilled the death of Christ. And we come seeing that as strength. Through his acts of love and mercy, we know that we are forgiven. That that strength of grace is our strength. That strength is there to feed us, to nurture us, so that we can go into the world and enter into the weakness and brokenness of the world and share that same strength. You're invited to the table today to receive that. And when you experience those piercings, the thorn in the flesh, I want you to remember that that God's strength is there for you. You know, we were... We, were do, we had a cleanup day yesterday, and uh, thanks to all those last week and who work on the grounds here, they're, they're beautiful. Um, I was working with Doug Nebel, and we were you know, taking some of the stuff we'd cut and throwing it in the dumpster, and uh, Doug said, ow, he, he caught a thorn from one of the trees that we had cut down. And then less than 30 seconds later, I hit the same kind of thorn on a diff, you know, another cutting, and we both took one in the palm, right about here on me. Real small puncture wound. And I said, well, Doug, I guess we're, we're experiencing the stigmata here. <laughs> Taking a thorn. But I remind you, we all have them. We all have them. We all carry them. And God's strength is sufficient for each of us, for all of us. May we be the beloved community that, that allows our weaknesses and brings strength together. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that in our weakness we find God's strength. May you find that today and every day. Amen. I invite you to join me in prayer now. Gracious and loving God, we, we give you thanks and praise for the beauty of these days, for the beauty of sky and earth, water and nature, of human beings and all the diversity that you, you continue to give and bless. May we, as we look at all that you've given, see your strength and your glory. As we give you thanks for Christ and his life and teachings, his humility and his strength, may we carry your grace in our lives and offer that freely wherever we go. Gracious God, we lift up this nation and all nations. We lift up this community and all communities. We lift up this church and all churches. We lift up all who gather uh, in different faiths and pray that we may join as your community to use the resources you've given to care for all and all your creation. Gracious God, we pray for all servant leaders at all levels of human life and existence. We pray for their strength and their wisdom and their weaknesses and that they may find strength and that we may find strength. Gracious God, we lift up all those who suffer from illnesses from natural calamities, from just circumstances that 
are not going well, and we pray for your Holy Spirit to bring strength, to help us through, to be able to reach out for help and to reach out with help and to share your, your love. Gracious God, we pray blessings on those who travel. We pray for those who move and those who are looking for new friends, for new ways, for new work, for a new life, going to new schools, going through change. We pray your blessings on all this day. And gracious God, we, uh, we join our voices now to pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, as we give thanks for all of God's blessings, I invite you to stand and sing the doxology, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these, the gifts you have given, and we offer these gifts and our lives to you, that they may be used for your service in the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to turn now to page 15 in your, your hymnal and to join with me in the great thanksgiving. We prepare now for Holy Communion. In the United Methodist Church, we have an open table, which means that you simply need to wish to de desire to receive Christ, to come forward. So we open that table to you now, and I invite you to, to join in this prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. 
your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. May your, by your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As we break the bread and receive from the one loaf, we remember that we, though we are many, that we are one in Christ. As we receive from the cup, we remember that our sins, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The table is ready and prepared for you. And you're invited to come forward. We'll start at the back and come forward on each side. You'll receive communion by intinction where you'll receive the bread and then dip the bread into the cup. Um, we also have gluten-free bread for those who need that. And uh, just know that this table is open for all and uh, that our weaknesses are uh, God's place for God's strength to shine. Thanks be to God.
Gracious God, we give thanks for this holy feast as we are nurtured, nourished with your strength. May we go forth aware of your goodness in the world, aware of your strength in our weakness. And may we move into that strength and share that strength with others that they may know of your love and grace and compassion for all. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you are able to join in singing our sending song, How Firm a Foundation, number 529 in the hymnal. Now go forth with God's mercy and God's strength into the world, and may your life be a witness to God's strength for all. Amen. <laughs>